Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome again to Kumbu Kenny. Um, my name is Adesoji Ginla, reaching you again from the belly of the beasts, the heart <laughs> of former <laughs> empire. And um, joining me again, as usual, is my co host. I would allow them to introduce themselves, starting with Sister Nduku. This is what happens when you're in the belly of the beast. You're, you're saying good evening to everyone when it's midday. Good day, everyone. <laughs> good day, everyone. And this is this is the fun of being in different uh, time zones, right? Yes, you can course. do all this yes. at the same time. So, yes, I'm glad to be here again, co-host with my brothers, Adesoji and uh, Milton Alimadi. Looking forward to this conversation, an extension of the amazing conversation we had with Mama Rodney yesterday. Absolutely. And and anyone, anyone who missed that? Uh, episode, please go back and watch that remarkable, remarkable episode with Dr. Patricia Rodney, the widow of the late Professor Walter Rodney. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows him, of course, from how Europe underdeveloped Africa. But there are a lot more books, and we'll mention some of them today. And I am also your co host, Milton Nalimadi. Back mm -hmm. to you, Comrade Adeso. Yes, thank you. Yes, um, referring again to the conversation we had with Dr. Patricia Rodney on the idea that the book is very much relevant. Almost 50, 50 60 years after independence of the same African countries, we're going to do what is known as a deep dive mm -hmm. and look behind the curtains as to what some of the problems are and try and prefer solutions to them. First, we need to start from the point of independence. What does independence mean? Claude A.K. in his book in 1982 referred it to as moving away from the most pernicious form of imperialism. So maybe that could be our excuse for saying, well, we're only 62 years and what has transpired before the 62 years can give us a leeway as to why we are where we are. Bless you. Thank you. But that said, question would be, I mean, I'm throwing out questions today. So you should all be well, you should all be well prepared. I'll start with Brother Milton. <laughs> When it comes to the idea of excuses, can we use the excuse that the underdevelopment of Africa was intentional? And by that, it gives credence to the book Walter Rodney wrote as to how Europe underdeveloped Africa. Your mm -hmm. thoughts? Well, you started off by posing the question about independence. And yes. I agree with what Professor Rodney actually said in a lecture a lecture we also mentioned in the last episode, crisis, crisis. in the periphery, yes. Africa and the Caribbean. I essentially, and as uh, Dr. Patricia Rodney, I refer to briefcase independence, sometimes called flag independence. Uh, so we, African countries are not really essentially independent. Mm. If you go by what was colonialism in the first place, colonialism usurped, and Rodney discusses this brilliantly in the same book, How Europe and Developed Africa. Leadership, there's a section, and people may miss that because throughout he provides a critique of the economic aspect, the cultural, the social aspect, but there's a section where he does not go long into it. It's only a few pages long, but he discusses the hijacking of sovereignty. Hmm. Sovereignty, having the right to determine, to chart your future, having the right to make the mistakes and learn from your mistakes. In other words, you are making the decisions, whether they are positive or negative. And he says by taking away that sovereignty, that was one of the biggest crimes of colonialism um, in Africa. So that sovereignty has not been returned to African countries. You know, as we know, most of them are dominated by the outside world. And I tell my students this, if the World Bank 
determines your budget and what you can spend on the different aspects of social services, economic services, then how can you claim to be independent? Can you imagine a international agency telling the United States government or the British government for that matter, <laughs> that this is how you should, these, these are the resources that you should designate to each aspect of your economy. That's unheard of. Mm -hmm. And yet that is exactly what is happening in many of the African countries, number one. Number two, can you imagine the United States having a Ghanaian or South African military base on US mm -hmm. territory, you know? So we have US bases all over Africa. <laughs> And we call these independent countries. How? Yeah. By, by what measure and by what definition? So what we have is a transformed modern 21st century type of colonialism, a much more smart colonialism. Mm -hmm. You know, how can you have Europeans running around uh, as governors <laughs> in Africa mm -hmm. wearing those funny hats, you know, with the funny feathers sticking yeah. out? <laughs> You know, with a funny coattail and a sword on his hips, you know, and all that. We can't have that. But we can have people with African skin mm -hmm. driving around in Mercedes, yeah. you know, wearing Western suits, mm -hmm. living in palatial places called State House mm -hmm. and all that. That one, the optics is somehow more acceptable. But in terms of the essence of colonialism, whereby you produce raw materials mm. that goes into the factories in Europe to convert them into so-called manufactured items mm -hmm. that are then shipped back to African countries and other parts of the world to buy at extremely inflated prices relative to what they uh, uh, expropriated the raw materials for. You know, that is essentially what we still have today, mm. you know. There's no industries in Africa. We are producing raw materials. We're importing manufacturers from Thank Europe. You. We're mm. importing manufacturers from China. So where is the independence? Independence, we have independence in name alone. So mm. my own position is that, um, and this is not to take away credit from the mm. first generation of leaders mm. who agitated in the 1950s <laughs> or 1940s even, and ultimately won uh, briefcase independence. Ronnie yeah, said, I was about to say. No, no, Rodney says it was important. Mm -hmm. But it was like opening the door to more possibilities. demands and possibilities. Mm -hmm. And that is where we can play our role mm -hmm. in pushing the envelope further mm -hmm. and demanding the return of our sovereignty and uh, the, the return of our ability to decide what uh, sort of economic path we want to pursue. Yes. Speaking of uh, determining, uh, demanding our sovereignty, do you, Sister Nduku, know of any examples where the sovereignty has not just been demanded, but has actually been taken that could form a guide as to how future generations might even look at the point of you know, taking the initiative as to if you're not going to give us power, we're going to have to take it. Dare I, dare I say this, but um, I guess I will. Yesterday, Dr. Patricia Rodney gave a good example when she mentioned briefcase independence. She, she gave a good example of a, a, a nation that is not uh, practicing briefcase independence, and she gave Cuba as the example. Yeah. Um, with Cuba, I'm going to give Burkina Faso at the time when uh, Thomas Sankara was leading it. Mm -hmm. um, those are two examples where the leaders with the people um, decided to focus on their nation and the well-being of their people mm -hmm. and not international interests, Western interests. And they were willing to say no to these entities, for example, the World Bank, the IMF, Sankara is known for saying, um, pack your bags and go to them and focus on them within their own nation, the people. He had the citizens of Burkina Faso building the railway by hand. You see women and men, regular women and men building the railway in Burkina Faso at the time. And in four years, it moved from a, a, a nation that was had no hope for the future to a nation that could show 
actual evidence of things that they were doing to improve the well-being of, of their people. So for me, those are the two examples. Uh, mm. Professor Patricia Rodney gives an example of Cuba and says that she was impressed by their education system and their healthcare system. Here is America, a land that is supposedly democratic and developed, and the healthcare system is miserable. So yes, my two examples are Cuba and uh, Burkina Faso during Thomas Sankara's leadership. Okay. Some, someone might ask you, what healthcare system <laughs> in the United Listen, States? <laughs> I am sitting here. I am sitting here trying to get. Um, this is this is funny. This is where the personal joins the 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 public, right? And it makes it relatable to the rest of you who are listening to us. I am here trying to get. Um, uh, because I, I do therapy on the side, I because dealing with all this stuff mm -hmm. is for your mental well-being. Of course. And uh, my therapist is 118 a week. And it has to be that way because my deductible is really high. Mm. And until I meet that deduct deductible, I can I have to pay $118 every week. Mm -hmm. And so I am left with the, the choice of saying, I cannot pay $100, $118 a week. I have to mm. put aside that essential healthcare resource, mental well-being. I have to put it aside because this system, the insurance system in the United States is, for lack of a better word, I am sorry, brother, screwed up. Absolutely. I mean, not only the healthcare system, the entire system. How can yeah. it be acceptable mm -hmm. that you can have multi-billionaires mm -hmm. and you have hungry people on the streets? Mm -hmm. You know, people around the world are not, if you tell some people around the world, and this is the United you, States. In the United States of America, where you can find people sleeping on the streets, sleeping on the subway stations, defecating inside the subway stations. Mm. You know? First of all, they would not even believe you. You see? Maybe because I need to start taking video. I was going to say that. We don't go around taking photos of these most negative aspects and printing it in our media and saying mm -hmm. this is the United States. Like they go and they exploit people in African countries taking their photos without any permission. Mm -hmm focusing only on the most negative aspect and then disseminating that around the world. You know, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, that's a very segue. That's a very important segue into the role of the media mm -hmm. into how they actually underdevelop our mindsets, mm -hmm. which ties in very importantly with the theme of uh, a book written by brother Milton and Limadi which is uh, titled uh, Manufactured Hate, How the West... Um, I think I always have it handy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, okay. absolutely. So, I mean, if you, if you bring that in the, into play and tie it with education, a, part, mm -hmm. a critical part of education is critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Of course. Now, if you remove critical thinking based on colonial style education and you put it, juxtapose it to an media that is constantly just feeding you with a negative oh, stereotype right. of exactly. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that? Oh, as definitely. to how think, that contributes to right. Right. the think, undermining of our mindsets. Right. I think we, um, in fact, Maybe in our thinking about independence, hmm. you know, we should start with mental independence, you know? Yes, hmm. indeed. Because I think that precedes any other type of independence, mm -hmm. you know? If you don't free your mind, you know, what kind of independence can you really have? How many of the uh, African presidents have an independent mindset, a liberated hmm. mind? I can't think of any example today, you know, very sadly. You know, I just cannot. You so where are they leading? <laughs> that is the epitome of, uh, of anti-Africanism, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember, he's the one who said, I love Donald Trump. After Donald Trump referred to Africa <laughs> as a collection of asshole countries, you know? And yet he purports to rule an entire African nation. Hmm. You know, where can people like that take us? You know? <laughs> but it goes back to... Uh, the chapter on on colonial education mm -hmm. in in uh, in Rod Rodney's uh, book, you know, mm -hmm. um, and um, it's 
it, 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 Thank you. Yes, that one and decolonial Marxism as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, and decolonial Marxism, yeah, where you, uh, you I should have brought that to the table. Mm -hmm. On education. Um, and it also, of course, uh, yes, there you go, Thank relates you. to Ngugi's book, uh, Decolonizing the Mind. The Mind, yes. Indeed. It relates to um, the later Cart Vitex uh, uh, book, Africa Africa's Cultural, Cultural Revolution. Cultural Revolution yes. Absolutely. We, what are we really asking for as Africans? Mm -hmm. What are we asking for? As um, Fanon said, if we are trying to ape Europe, right, and become mm -hmm. like Europe, why don't we let the experts do it? The best people to do that would be Europeans, right? Mm -hmm. If we want to become like Europe, let Europeans do it for us then, right? <laughs> yeah. So what are we asking for as African people? Are we asking to restore the culture which was uprooted when Europe uh, hijacked our sovereignty uh, and imposed uh, European uh, dictates on Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, and if that's not what we're demanding for, then we should not be talking about independence. Independence, um, uh, uh, the word itself, right, involves repudiation yeah. of something which has been imposed mm. upon you uh, the only thing it seems that we've repudiated uh, was uh, the, 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 the complexion hmm. or the skin tone of uh -huh. the people who are running the state of affairs. Uh, what else did we repudiate? You know, during colonial rule, they were taking debt on behalf of Africans. Think about it. Yeah. They're taxing you and taking loans on behalf of your a country that is supposed to be yours, right? Mm -hmm. And what are the current leaders doing? They're taking loans, <laughs> imposing taxes on our people, and using the money to import. Uh, they're subsidizing wealth in mm. Europe and other mm. parts of the world. And uh, so when they talk about Africa getting aid, it's nonsense. And mm. that's because they control mm -hmm. the narrative as well. Mm -hmm. So we have conditioned our minds to believe and accept that we are getting aid called for an aid mm. uh, from Europe and from other parts of the world, the United States. We're not. Mm -mm. We're not. We are the one that uh, are, are subsidizing. Funding that aid. Funding <laughs> that aid and building up the economy. Aid. You know? I mean, so, to, buttress, to buttress the point you made there, in 2016, uh, Marcotis wrote uh, a brilliant piece for wants.org if you go to www.wants.org it's titled the new colonialism mm -hmm. there he makes the case for 40 british british companies taken out mm -hmm. of africa in that year 2016 material resources worth 197 billion us dollars big b not small m Mm -hmm. billion US dollars. And in the same year, guess how much Britain gave in aid? Developmental aid to Africa. Brother Adisoji, could you please spell out that link? Want... It should be www.want.org. No, that wants that is what I need spelled. Yeah, W-A-N-T, I think it is. But if you Google uh, Marcotis, if you Google Marcotis, it should come up. Okay. Because it's on, a, so, so, and that in that same year, Britain in developmental aid gave to the entire African continent 25 million pounds. And it gets credit for quote unquote <laughs> giving aid and supporting Africans. So, it gets that positive, uh, you know, picture, uh, you uh, know, yeah, it, image, the false image, perspective. Yeah. Yes. See? When in fact they're stealing. You see? Yeah. You know, see how brilliant they are, though, in controlling the narrative? They control the narrative from the get-go, that we are coming here to civilize heathens, people <laughs> who savages. are unbelievers, who are killing, uh, as they say, killing each other, you know, so-called tribal wars. <laughs> we're here to stamp that out, and we're stamping it out by killing 10 million people in Congo. <laughs> But that's just a collateral damage, Imagine cutting off that. their hands, cutting off their feet, mm. you know, the most barbaric practices. And yet we are the ones who are portrayed as barbarians. 
And um, to add to that, in Antwerp, one of the most uh, recognizable pieces of chocolate is the cut hand. No. That is sold. That is sold. I mean, you can make that stuff up. No, we can't. I was, I was, I was going to add to what Alimadi was saying when you're speaking about independence, and I quickly googled the word independent, what it means, and there are two meanings: free from outside control, not mm -hmm. depending on another's authority, and the second meaning is not depending on another for livelihood or subsistence. Mm -hmm. And both mm -hmm. those uh, explanations you just provided defines the relationship that Africa has today. With in the opposite world. way, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to keep agitating for independence. Mm -hmm. You know, and we need to look beyond the skin mm -hmm. pigmentation and realize mm -hmm. that the people that uh, share the same complexion with us, in fact, are not our friends. They're and, and that's, Africans. Yeah, you know? yeah. that's one one point that uh, Dr. Patricia Rodney, um, in our session last week, uh, insisted on that it, the power is in the people. We are the ones who should take action and demand a different form of government, different leaders. She also explained that our idea of leaders right now is, is not... Oh, that yes. was so Remember brilliant. That? Please, sister, oh. expand on that because somebody emailed me. <laughs> somebody emailed me and said, I watched I'm trying to grab my notes. Uh -huh. The best part for me was her explanation of leadership. So yeah. sister, please elaborate on that point. Yeah. Please um Oh, goodness. Yeah. She talked about the fact that um, we we look at leaders based on their degrees, based on their mm -hmm. prestige, or the based fact on that their they can status, point to their, or the fact that they can point to, point to, to their degrees on the, yeah. on their the wall. Degrees on the wall. <laughs> but we should start looking at leaders based on what they are doing for the people. Mm -hmm. And we should, she actually said we should do report, regular reports. We should re yep. demand regular reports of leaders yep. for them mm -hmm. to show us what they have done for the people. Right. in the time that they have been in leadership. Not what they say they would do, yes. because that's right. the only yeah. time you can hold them yeah. to account. Right. And, and when and they the, come back to get our votes. You know? The yes. other thing I usually say with this is yourself, myself, Brother Ali Madi, we have had to show resumes when we go do job, we, we go search for jobs. And when we get the jobs, we have to have performance reviews. When you go mm -hmm. get your performance review, you have to show what you've done. Correct. That, will, that will either keep you in that employment, keep you in the status of being a good employee, and even give, get you uh, a promotion and, and increased salary. So mm -hmm. why, for the people who have the most important job in and our life lives... Life and death determining job. In our lives, the most important... Why are we not requiring resumes and right. reports of what they have been doing to benefit yep. the people? Performance because, evaluation, right. Because the leaders have essentially become what um, the great Kwame Nkrumah will called neocolonials. Mm -hmm. Because in his book mm -hmm. titled uh, Neocolonialism, The Last Stage of Imperialism, mm -hmm. he lists a list of uh, leaders, a uh, list of companies that were mm -hmm. deriving their resource, mm -hmm. their vital resource from Africa that... You know the moment you uproot those companies, he named a couple of them. Yes, he the did. Diamond companies, the bears, yep, 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 the, yep, yep. you know, so many of them. American and, companies, right? And those companies are still existing today mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. some shape or form mm -hmm. in Africa. They've yeah. morphed, you know, mm -hmm. SUA has become something else. Yeah. Unilever is still very much there. And yes. these are companies that were there pre-colonialism Right. during colonialism and now are still yeah. operating right. within the shores of africa right i'm glad you mentioned that book that book is also you know we are talking about the importance of uh there you go of uh of professor rodney's book how you to develop africa that yes. book is just as important um and for people who want to get a sampling of it if you go online and you google the introduction Mm -hmm. uh, you can read the introduction. It's available on PDF on many uh, websites. The introduction to that book. If that introduction does not convince you to order the book today, then you are not a reader and you are not in love with Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have to make that statement emphatically. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's just remarkable. Mm -hmm. You know, the way he breaks it down. He talks about many of the issues that we're discussing today. He says, um, we will end up having rulers who do not owe their uh, allegiance. allegiance to yeah. the to population. Mm. They don't need the vote of uh, their own citizens because they have the support of the superpower. You see? Think mm. about that. 
And if you have a situation like that, it means that leader will not be obligated to build good schools, mm -hmm. to build good infrastructure, to create jobs for its citizens, and to take care of the health care of its citizens. And it makes sense, yep. you know, so long as the foreign entity supporting the leader is happy with the so-called leader, then it's fine. And that's what we have today. He talks about the importance of food independence. Yep. Mm. You know, we spent some time discussing that. How can you say you're independent if, you know, you're fed by an outside power, mm. you see? And that's one of the main reasons why uh, Sankara was killed as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because he insisted on food independence. And within three years, Burkina Faso was able to become uh, a food uh, independent. So that book, I highly, highly recommend that book. That book is actually a blueprint for African development. When people talk about the, um, the African continental free trade uh, agreement, agreement. Free trade area, that is just a rewriting of, of, of the book you just held up a few minutes ago. And here's the problem. When people hear, mm -hmm. you know, neo-colonialism, imperialism, you know, many of them, uh, they just run away because those words have been so demonized yep. by Western media, they start associating it all with uh, Marxism. And then from there, they jump to, to Stalin. <laughs> and then they jump from there to massacres. So they, the most radical and intimidating thoughts start coming to their mind. If you read that book, that book could have had a much more benign title. It could have mm -hmm. been How to Build Africa into an Economic Power. That's yeah. what the book is actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so forget the title for a minute and read that book. And you'll agree that uh, uh, what we're telling you today is correct. So you're saying, what you're saying in essence is what uh, um, Comrade uh, Sekiture said is a fallacy that if the African, if the Europeans, they praise our leaders, they, we should not consider them as sellouts. Mm. <laughs> and so, which means uh, President uh, Yoweri Museveni is one of the greatest. Def definitely friends. doubt. Yeah. <laughs> doubt any leader who's being praised by the West. That's a red flag. I mean, that was, his, that was his say, say, a friend of the West. A friend of the West. What does that mean? I exactly. want to be a friend of Africa first. And then I can be a friend of anybody else. Exactly. You know? So, <laughs> that... brother, Ad, brother Adesoji, quickly, if I can add another book that, and this was mentioned by, I'm just going to put it up there, by uh, Dr. Patricia Rodney yesterday, is The Enduring Relevance of How Europe Underdeveloped Africa by Karim mm. Haji, right. uh, Tanzanian Karim Haji. And she recommended that anyone who wants to read Walter Rodney's How Europe Underdeveloped Africa start that by reading this one. book. Right. Um, it will right. make your experience that much more uh, pleasant when you re read how Europe underdeveloped Africa. So, so yeah, the point I was going to... Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I've written it down myself. Mm -hmm. The point, I mean, uh, Amazon gets a budget actually. So mm -hmm. um, the point I was going to make was Secretary then said, the moment you hear them praise me, know that mm -hmm. I have sold you out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, which speaking of selling ones out is, gives us an important segue into our next segment, mm -hmm. which is uh, Brother Milton would love this segment very much because uh, <laughs> it's uh, closer to home. Mm -hmm. And um, one of his uh, principal characters might make his star entry, which is... Do we, wa to... do we want to start that part, Brother Adesoji? <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, African corrupt leaders yeah. as... Mm -hmm what is their role in yeah. still keeping, helping Europe to underdevelop Africa. Right. Because, but, it, mm -hmm. because right. It's, not, it's not just the fact that they're gone, mm -hmm. but the fact that their influence still pervades Correct. the African continent. So right. one of the ways they've been able to do that mm. is through our corrupt leaders. Correct. So... Free, free sure. ring. Everybody, sure. you can, absolutely. I think you can uh, throw in your lackeys. <laughs> right. You know the sad Apex. thing is, the sad thing is, we talk about uh, corrupt African leaders. 
Yes. Which is fine, which is correct, True. but which at the same time insulates the corrupt European Western American Europe. leaders. Yes. You see? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, corruption is a two way street, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and and uh, for listeners, let me just give you uh, to what extent uh, the Europeans and Americans are corrupt, mm -hmm. right? In, um, in 2018, in December, there was a trial in uh, U.S. federal court in New York. Mm -hmm. A Chinese national was tried by the U.S. government for paying a bribe to two African leaders, uh, the leader of Chad, the late uh, Idris Dabi, Idris Dabi, yeah. And they said uh, Dabi rejected the bribe. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Chinese uh, individual's name, Patrick Ho, Xi Ping Patrick Ho, mm -hmm. H-O is the last name. And also paying a bribe of $1 million to Uganda's General Yuri Museveni, the dictator, and his Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sam Kutesa. And he was convicted, you see? Who was the convicted? Chinese, the Chinese the national Chinese okay. was convicted in the U.S., okay. So the matter is closed. Sentence to three years. Yeah, so the matter is closed. Okay. Uh, listen. Now, now listen mm. to this part. <laughs> How did the U.S. gain jurisdiction, first of all, if it's bribing exactly. African leaders? Because the Chinese national used a New York-based bank to wire half the money, 500000 mm. to Cortez's mm -hmm. account, the foreign minister. He was impatient. He couldn't wait. Mm. So his was wired to an account that he gave so that locked in the U.S. jurisdiction. Museveni's share, Patrick Ho flew to Uganda because Museveni invited him to his inauguration after he stole uh, in one of the previous elections in 2016. And he took the 500,000 wrapped as a gift and delivered it in person to him, right? But... And yet this is the same Museveni who a few weeks ago was in the White House for the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit. Just think about that. Here, here's the thing, though, you know? brother Alimadi. This, which so is the more corrupt, is my question. Is it the United States, or is it the puppet in Uganda? And this is this is the point I'm trying to make right here. This is the genius of oppressors and corrupt leaders, corrupt individuals, because they're not leaders. Again, right. Patricia Rodney, Dr. Patricia Rodney, Mama Rodney, advised us to stop calling these people leaders because they don't fit yes. the bill. Right, yes, so they're not leaders, corrupt individuals, important. and and imperialists and oppressors. This is this is the genius of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Notice how the money sent to the one individual you mentioned in Uganda mm -hmm. was wired, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's exp like he's expendable. We can he can be uh, uh, we can we can um, make him the scapegoat. But for Museveni, I'm, I'm glad you said that because but now Museveni, he's no longer foreign minister. By the way, I am so certain. <laughs> but Museveni's amount mm -hmm. was carried mm -hmm. by hand and handed to him. Why? Yep. So that it cannot be traced. Exactly. So and that that's it cannot why be he's tracked. still so that, the, the misrule of Uganda Right? Today. <laughs> so that when you go to court and say from the U.S. this happened to... The, no. So that the U.S. does not have to hold Museveni accountable because Thank there you, will sister. be evidence. So to Sana. To me... Thank you. Thank filling you. the blanks, my fellow brothers and sisters. So, Thank you. Thank you. And um, let's keep reminding our people, Conrad Adesoji, when we look at the corrupt uh, misrulers in Africa, mm. let's look at the other side of the equation. Exactly. Who is let's, enabling them? Who exactly. is, who is let's protecting not allow them? The enablers to get away. Yes. Who yeah. is keeping them in office? Because mm -hmm. we, we know the story in Uganda. We know that there are people who have run for office who are qualified mm -hmm. and who are supported by the, by the peoples. But you don't hear any delegation from the U.S. going to Uganda to talk to Museveni no. so that he can settle and accept the opposition as the winner. You don't hear that. No, of course not. Mm -hmm. I would uh, throw into the mix um, Blaise Kampaore. Yes. Uh, for those who don't Fantastic. know, uh, Blaise... <laughs> yeah. Be nice. <laughs> yeah. <Now, laughs> Explain this, to this... the people. No, no, really. Go ahead. <laughs> so Blaise Kampaore would come into prominence in 19, October 15, 1987 mm. with the assassination, mm. with overseeing the assassination of Thomas Sankara. 
Correct. What was important about two of no. them was the fact no. that they were best buddies. He was actually Sankara. Sankara was his best man at his mm -hmm. wedding. Mm -hmm. And not only that, San, uh, Blaise Campari lost his father at a very early age. He actually mm -hmm. ate and slept in the houses of the camp, uh, Sankaras. But this is where he gets, you know, muddy. Betrayal. For for five times he tried to kill Sankara, but that's mm -hmm. not the. But that's not the. He eventually got him. When Sankara was killed and they went through, you know, in order to find a justification for killing him, mm -hmm. they went through his bank account. There was no money in there. In fact, the only life possessions he had, material possessions he had, was two bicycles, a beat up car, mm -hmm. and his bed. That was and his, his only and his guitar. And Talk his about guitar. a leader. A and leader. And more, most importantly, his books. Yes. Mm. His books were yeah, he disappeared. His books. his books were disappeared. Nobody knows. I mean, uh, oh, to them. but hold on, oh, hold, on, on, second, on. hold on. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So, uh, fast forward 2014, I believe, when he was overthrown, Blaise Campare. Mm -hmm. When Blaise Campare was overthrown, the key is in his bank account. When he was overthrown, mm -hmm. He left with a value of not not less than two hundred and thirty million U.S. dollars in an impoverished country. I'm glad I let you finish that that statement, yeah. brother, because it gave gave me the juxtaposing ends. You have an individual who, after supposedly leading a nation, has a nation to show that is impoverished. But his account is bloated with wealth, money. And then you have a leader who, when he dies, his nation is thriving mm -hmm. and his account is empty. People, choose your leaders wisely. Hmm. His financial account is empty. All of it. He had a bicycle for heaven's sake. He doesn't even yeah. have fancy couches and stuff. Not yeah. even a car. The most important account for Thomas Sankara was this account. And his people. You know? And his people. Because well he shared this people. account with his people. You know? That's what we call, okay. you know, when we talk about transfer of skills, technology, and, and knowledge, he transferred this to his people. The entire nation was transformed. Mm -hmm. You see? So that's why when you look at Burkina Faso today, and the challenges that it's facing. You know, it's remarkable. And that's what they prefer. Yeah. The West. A dependent Burkina Faso that cannot fend for itself. For itself, yes. You know? Yeah. Yes. Look at Libya. Libya destroyed. They're happy with that. I was coming you know? to that. Be I because it, it puts you in a position where you need aid. I was coming to Perfect. that. Perfect. It puts you in a position where you need support for terrorism. Absolutely. It puts you in a position where you need Western military to help you out because you cannot do it yourself. Dependence, dependence, dependence. The West hates independence. Hmm. China, you know, no matter how you feel about the system or government, they're independent from the West. China used to be the playing field for the West. Remember? The way they're still playing playing with Africa, you know, the turn of the century, the 20th century, early part, yeah. Yeah. they still had like British forces in China, China American yeah. forces in, in parts of China. You keep inspiring. Can, can you imagine having <laughs> these forces in China today? Yeah. Of course not. That is the essence of independence. And, 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 and China did it within a short time. Because remember, in 1960, the per capita income of China was ninety dollars, nine zero. Ghana's was almost a hundred and eighty, double that of China. Think about that. Look at where uh, China is today, brother Alimari. Before we hand it back to our brother to to guide the conversation, my my advice to African leaders, if you haven't thought of this yet, and your advisors is, you have the Chinese sitting with you at tables. Why don't you ask them how they did it? See, that's the thing. They don't want to because, you know, it involves challenging the West 
it involved declaring that I actually want true independence. You know, so what we need to insist to the youth of Africa, if it was okay to say, get rid of European colonials, mm -hmm. we are telling you it's okay to get rid of African colonialists as well. Yes. You know? I mean, I your own destiny. <laughs> yes, I was going to, I was going to pose a China, I was going to pose a China question, but before I do, it will be remiss of us not to mention the Congo, mm. the corrupt leadership of Mobutu Sese Seiko has left a gaping hole in what is known as the heart of Africa. Right. Can I correct you, brother? Yes. The corrupt leadership of Mobutu Sese Seko and the United States and Britain and France. This and is good that we hold them all accountable. No, 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 no. No, all jokes aside, you're right, right. brother Limadi. Yeah. When we bring From the charge, on, that's how we should do it. When know? we bring the charge, we must name mm -hmm. all parties involved. Mm -hmm. This is this yeah, is how Mobutu we go just, to court. Mobutu was just a name. Mm. You know, it could have been all anyone else who was willing parties. to kill Patrice Lumumba. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and take his orders from the United States and from Belgium, Britain, and France. Mm. Obutu just happened to be at the right place at the right time. Right time, yes. You know? And so, which brings us to the case of the aid agencies operating mm. in Congo. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. In a place where literally it's a treasure store. Mm -hmm. For all of the world's yep. technology, yep. gold, what have yep. you, yep. but yet oh, you're providing yeah. exactly. Yet you're providing aid to aid. I mean, it's yeah. the, the, the when they say the streets of uh, are lined with gold, they're referring to Congo. <laughs> the streets uh, are paved with gold. My friend said, when you go to. Uh, where did he call it? When you go to Brussels, mm. if you look, if you take a walk around Brussels, every building has an imprint of the Congo. Mm -hmm. Every building has yeah. an imprint of the Congo. Mm -hmm. He says, when he, when the, when his host drove him around and was pointing out everything to him, he was so incensed that. He went into an ice cream parlor and the lady behind the counter asked him, what do you want? The first thing that came out of his mind was Congo. <laughs> but he forgot he that he was for ice cream. <laughs> Could you please explain what you mean, Brother Adesoji, when you say imprint? Because I want the evidence. My, my goal is for this evidence of how our Africa is supposed so, to be wealthy. Come in so the essence is yeah. rubber used to be the primary, uh, primary export of Congo yes. during the colonialism during mm -hmm. during the the regime of uh, king leopold right mm -hmm. right the only guy the only individual who sat during the scramble for africa mm -hmm. as his own self he didn't sit on behalf of any country he sat on his own good name in inverted commas and so people were asked to bring rubber and you had to submit a quota if not your hands will be chopped off. Yes. That hand chopping off, incidentally, is one of, I said it earlier, is one of Belgium's chief exports in terms of chocolates, the cut hand. Yeah. is a throwback to that period. But there's a very good book by Adam Hosschild titled... Um, What's it called there again? King uh, Leopold's Ghost. King Leopold's Ghost. On the face of that pic on the face of that book is a brother, an African, staring blankly into the camera. That chief there, his people were asked to go and provide rubber, their quota, and they couldn't, and they were going to chop their hands off, and he stepped forward. You can chop off my hands. What is the use of my people without their hands? How are they going to feed themselves? Was his question. So in that one book, you would get everything you want about what transpired during Leopold's time in the Congo. And back to the present time, that entire chocolate business 
is worth at least 7 to 40 billion US dollars. So for our people, when we talk about decolonizing minds, Brother Adesoji, please, black people, do not buy this chocolate. Do not have in your house the chocolate that symbolizes the, the, the atrocities that were brought upon your people. I mean, talk of biting the hands that feed you. Yeah. And, and as you both talk about Congo, I, am, I have been talking about this company and I want all Africans in the continent and outside the continent to be aware of this company. And if there's anything we can do to stop this company from having access in, in Africa, we should do it. It's called Cobalt Invest. It's co Cobalt, actually. Cobalt Metals. And I'm going to show it on the screen right there. And this is a company that is supported and funded by three main people. There are other investors, but the three main people I want us to focus on is Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and Richard Branson. And their goal is to drain Africa of all its resources. That's their goal. That's their mandate. This company will be getting resources from Africa. We're talking about Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and Richard Branson. These are people who are into tech. So you know Congo is one place where they're going to be. And my question is, how much money is enough money? Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and Richard Branson have enough money to sit back. Now they want to come and still take from those who don't have. Yeah. Um, Why is Africa allowing them to do business in Africa? No, I think these are the kind of uh, revelations that can inspire the youth to um, uh, really seize their destiny and deliver true independence uh, to African uh, countries, you know? Uh, one of the things I've been thinking about, you know, every year they have the annual meeting of the African Union, right? We need to start having our own version of these types of meetings. Yes. And they would be uh, leading activists, right? Mm -hmm. Prominent leaders mm -hmm. who don't occupy positions of power, but people know their leadership credentials. They fit... Yeah the uh, conditions that were elaborated by sister Dr. Patricia Rodney. Yes. And, you know, at the same time that they're having the so-called official African mm. Union meeting, we would have the parallel meeting in a different uh, a Should different we have city. it next year? Uh, I think we should start planning for it even next year because we need to have that platform where we can have these major conversations mm. to determine Africa's future to remove military bases in Africa, mm -hmm. to restore our sovereignty, to uh, make sure if we want to fund projects, uh, the funds are coming from elsewhere, not from the World Bank exactly. and the IMF and those conditions. And it can be done. And we can build a critical momentum and really decide who becomes a leader mm -hmm. in an African country. The decision of who leads African country should not be made by Washington, by London, by Paris, or by Brussels. That's what we need to do. So speaking of, um, speaking of aid agencies, mm. uh, one key aid agency is the UN. Mm. By virtue of its presence alone in Congo, a series of atrocities have happened on their own. my African drum. Mm -hmm. And one of the most uh, heinous acts is the the raping of underage girls by French soldiers. Mm -hmm. What was then egregious about it was those soldiers were withdrawn from the U.S. contingent, not the entire U.N. contingent, French U.S. contingent. They removed just those soldiers. Those soldiers were not handed over to the local authorities, but in fact repatriated to France under which they say there will be military trials. Nothing has Have come Have we had them yet? I was about to ask you. They'll Nothing never has try, come up. They'll never try European for raping African children. This is, this is another movement. As no. Africans, collectively, we need to demand that France does something about these soldiers. But you're not going to... And until them. they do, they have no access to Africa. This, yeah. is, this and, is the type of power that we as Africans have, and I don't understand why we don't use it. So until because, the French try these soldiers 
in a fair court, it shouldn't be one run by French judges and, and overseen by French uh, authorities. Mm -hmm. They have no more access to Africa. See, that's part of the problem. Our people have, um, not all of our people, but many of our people have accepted the devaluation of African lives, you see? Yes. Yeah. So that their threshold of what they're willing to accept, you know, tragically, is, uh, is, is very high, you know. Mm. I mean, and we have examples of Africans being more outraged about European suffering than about African suffering, you know. <laughs> and the signal comes from the top. Remember when uh, there was a, the massacre in, uh, in France, and there's been quite a few, I forget which one, was oh, it the, the magazine? Is it the was Charlie the Hebdo? Magazine? The Charlie yes. Hebdo? Right. Or the Bataclan? The one at the Actually, Bataclan? And I, I don't recall which one, but there was a big global uh, uh, solidarity. Okay, so it was the Bataclan one. That was the right. Bataclan. Mm -hmm. And then there was a big march in, in Paris. The Africa, with the African the leaders. African Miss Rulers flew <laughs> all the way to show their solidarity and to shed tears. We don't even need comedians anymore. You know? We just Not call really. the African leaders. They'll, you know? they'll entertain us. And yet these are the same leaders Talking about who will not shed a single tear hmm. for the suffering of Africans. That is why we have the situation such as the ongoing abuses uh, against the people of Congo mm. um, by the, uh, the UN so-called peacekeeping force, you mm. know, in, uh, in the Congo. And that's the tragedy. We, we have to uh, really convince our people that you have value, you have to love yourself, you have to love other Africans. Uh, and we need to show them examples of Africans who were transformed by loving themselves. And mm -hmm. Thomas Sankara, of course, is always a brilliant example. Exactly. You know, uh, even if you see his images, if you see uh, films or videos of him, you can tell that this is an African who absolutely 100% loved being African. <laughs> and once that happened, it transforms you and your persona. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, yes. <laughs> he exuded, you know, love for other Africans. Yeah. And we need to tell them that's all right. And once they accept that, then they will not accept this kind of abuse uh, quick, of quick, Africans and fellow Africans, you know. Quickly, Adesoji, um, before we hand it back to you, I was going to mention um, Dr. Patricia Rodney yesterday mentioned consciousness raising. And this is what Kumbukini is doing, consciousness raising. Absolutely. But as we raise consciousness, as we inform you, our brothers and sisters, on the continent and outside the continent, we are also asking you, to take action. You cannot sit there and complain about how hard life is if you're not doing anything about right. it. Right. You know, you can't complain about how expensive food is if you're going to let GMO companies come in and continue to make your yep. food expensive. Yeah. You, you cannot complain about how um, your president is not doing anything if you're the one who went to vote for him and you knew very well he had no qualities of a leader. Yeah. We need to encourage people to start organizing, which is what I love. Uh, the late comrade Kwame Toure, mm. AKA Stokely Carmichael for, yeah, Michael. you know, any engagement he participated in, mm -hmm. whenever he was leaving, the last words he would say was organize, yes, organize, organize. organize, organize. organize. <laughs> and then people who know him said, anytime you call them, the first thing he picked up the phone was, Ready for the revolution. <laughs> how, are how, how are you today? Who, who's, who's this, by the way? Who's calling? <laughs> you know, so, and I also want to leave, um, with regards to the leaders, we have to leave on a very good note. And it will be one from Brother Thomas Sankara, comrade, mm -hmm. when he was asked that, why would you go to Cuba and Moscow for help? He says, calmly, stepped back and looked at the, said, well, if you give me a better offer, then I might not have to travel that far. 
It's as simple as that. You, you think I want to travel that far to go and seek help? If the help is next door, and if I get it, I'm fine. But if I don't get it, I have to go, you know? And it makes logical sense. If you make Africans, African like uh, the the leader in, uh, um, what's it called? The Malawi leader who said Africa is open for business, but is not open for looting. Exactly. Difference. Big difference. You have to come in with the right idea. China is not perfect, but at least China is living a much more indelible footprint than what has transpired decades before. And business means that you're in charge. You decide how you want the business now, to go. Yes. Uh, speaking of deciding, mm -hmm. who said it? That in order, I think it was uh, Situ in his The Act of War, mm -hmm. said you have to know who you're dealing with. If you're doing business with China, why don't you study China? Yeah. What does China want? And what does China need to achieve? China needs to achieve 8 percent growth every year whatever business they get out of africa contributes to that growth use that as a bargaining chip to drive the message home yeah i think we're asking too much <laughs> of, of we have grand story. ideas grand I, ideas I, I, and I dreams our priority should be to get rid of these misrulers i think yes hmm. you know or at they've, least they've, they've, have they've, a they've, had, they've, they've had enough time to uh to change your heart. I don't see them becoming uh, loving Africa um, mm. tomorrow. I think um, it's, it would be like telling the, the European colonials, you know, do better by us, which by the way, is what the elite was saying in Ghana mm -hmm. when they invited Kwame Nkrumah to become the secretary general of mm -hmm. the United Gold Coast Convention. They were asking, you know, Europeans to open the door because now we've become educated mm -hmm. accountants, lawyers, doctors. Why are you still calling, closing the door to us? Kuma said, uh-uh. We don't want them to open the door. We want them to leave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yes. if you guys are not asking for that, let me go my way and form my own party. party. And he went down to the masses, the youth, which the Ghanaian mm -hmm. elite were even looking down upon, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, these are not educated people. And that's how Nkrumah became the first leader of Ghana. So I think it's time for us to bypass the corrupt, useless elite and their Western partners. Let's go back to the despised uh, masters again. You've given, you've Can given... I quickly sneak in something, Adesoji, quickly, quickly, if, as his uh, brother Alimadi is talking about elites? Mm. I want to talk about quickly, Brother uh, Walter Rodney. And, and Dr. Patricia Rodney mentioned this yesterday. He was a humble man. Yes. Despite all the degrees, despite all the qualifications, yeah. he went and met with the Rastafarians mm -hmm. on the streets where mm -hmm. they were. He did not mm -hmm. think of himself better than them. Yep, yep, yep. yep. He was concerned about their well being, truly concerned about their well being. Mm -hmm. And this is what you're talking about, Alimadi. Exactly. This is yeah. exactly what you're talking about. These elite yep. black people walking around with their white supremacist souls, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. keeping their yep. people oppressed. Yep. Start showing exactly. Well, let's go right. back to the African ways of, 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 of being where right. your worth was dependent on what you've done for your people, mm -hmm. not the degrees mm -hmm. you have on the wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing is, even in the Western societies, where, which is bereft of uh, humanity, mm. human compassion, spirituality, really. Many of them are seeking African roots, yep. right? And yet at the same time, they're convincing our people to run away yes. from the same African yes. roots. Yes, there's, there's, a plant, there's a plant in Namibia. There's a fruit in Namibia that they're all going for. I, just told you, I don't know if you remember the name. And it's, it's, it's a new hit it's it's a health plant it's it only grows in namibia and i forget right. the name right now right. but this is what we're talking about they're mm -hmm. going all the way to africa to get natural mm -hmm. solutions to health and they've convinced us to hate well on this other end they're they're selling you pharmaceutical mm -hmm. medicines mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
which actually gives me a very good segue to the new to the next segment when you put up the book uh, the groundings with my brothers mm -hmm. it was the role of intellectuals which brings me also to the case of when you said Kwame Nkrumah went to the grassroots people, mm -hmm. yeah. which is what Walter Rodney advises in the groundings mm -hmm. with my brothers. Absolutely. Uh, so the question is, what is the role of the education system mm. and what is the role of the intellectuals produced by the present education system? Yeah. Should we yep, reform yep. that education system? Without a doubt, without a doubt. I don't think if you mm -hmm. go to, uh, to China, you're going to find that they're teaching in the schools Western worshiping. Yep. I very much doubt it. I'm not familiar with what they're teaching, but I'm willing to bet it is not praising or celebrating. <laughs> they, have, the they have Kiswahili now as yeah. one of the subjects yeah. because yeah. You see? for obvious you see? reasons. Yeah. So we need to obviously adapt our education system to produce Africans who love mm. Africa and want to build Africa, mm. you know, and not to just emulate others. Mm -hmm. and say, this is where and how, you know, we need to be. You know, because the part of this tragedy is this. We think that they've actually convinced many Africans that, quote-unquote, civilization came with the arrival of the West. Mm. When, in fact, destruction, plunder, bloodshed, retrogression started with the Western intervention, mm -hmm. you know? Many of our people are not even familiar with the history of Kemet, you know, mm, ancient mm. Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. And that was a African civilization, black African civilization, as Czech Anta Job, Job you yeah. know, used to say. And once you know this knowledge that the first developed culture in the world was created by Africans in Africa, you know, that should inspire you not to tolerate mediocrity in the form of the misrulers that we have today. But, you know, of course, this is not even taught in our schools, yeah. in African settings. Mm. Many of them hear the word Egypt and they look at the current majority inhabitants hmm. of the country now called Egypt, Egypt, and they think those are Egyptians, you see? <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the technically uh, modern Egyptians, but not, but they're not the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. that mm. built that high culture 3,200 years yeah. before the birth of Christ. Those were Africans, you know, like us. Dark and this is very empowering people. knowledge. You know, when my students at John Jay College realize this, you can almost see the change in their eyes, their demeanor, the way they walk, the way they interact with me and with others. It's just that's, amazing. That's what gives us the swagger. Is you know? that... <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah. that's part of the thing. Yeah. Let's teach true African knowledge. And of course, that's part of the mission of Kumbukeni, mm -hmm. so that we can liberate their minds. Yes. You know, part of the reason why the misrulers are able to misrule for such a long time is because our people have been miseducated. Educated, yes. Yeah. The, the, the one thing I was going to say to answer your question, Brother Adesoji, Walter, um, in how Europe underdeveloped Africa, he talks about this, he gives the example of diamonds and he shows how the Europeans were very careful to make sure that they limited the process of, of, of refi refining the diamond, getting, yes. it, getting it and refining it. There was yep. a limit as to where the African could participate. Mm -hmm. yep. And mm -hmm. that's, that's based on the value of the diamond. While it's Correct. raw, while it's not processed and refined, it's not as valuable as once it's refined. And this mm -hmm. is where the Africans were. This is where you were allowed. The education was limited to this area. Yeah, because that, then, was, that was the intention. The intention yes, was yeah, to I, show I get that. that. But I'm going to also make another point. The, the, the refining, the part of the diamond that is associated mm -hmm. with value, because it's associated with value, is going to make sure that you're paid well, was left to the Europeans. And the education that would qualify you to do that task was left to the Europeans. The thing, the connection I'm making to it is, as Africans growing up in, um, in Kenya, and now that I think about it, some people in my family, they wanted to do aviation, they wanted to do engineering. But those things, those, those um, uh, careers, 
that will get you to have those skills that actually make a difference are so expensive. It's, it's intentionally done so. This is intentionally done because if they were accessible and affordable to all Africans, then we would have all kinds of engineers, African engineers walking around Africa, creating manufacturing industry in Africa. But the, the West is very careful and very strategic at this. They make sure they pr price these careers and these skills that will enable you to be independent at a high cost so that very few of you can afford it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mm. I want to go back to the example of the uh, the diamond, though. I mean, that is to me is an example of another level of total incompetence on the part of the misrulers. That they say, okay, so long as it's still in your country, it has no mm. value. Mm -hmm. Once I have it, I cut it and I polish it, then it has value. That mm -hmm. is what they used to tell to the oil-producing countries. Hmm. Say, so long as your oil is just crude oil, yeah. it has no value. I have to bring it to the West. I have to refine it and turn it into petroleum and other products. These countries had accepted it for a long time, yeah. but it took the emergence of, uh, of, uh, of people like uh, uh, Muammar Gaddafi, who said, no way. They want the resources. Let's demand the price that we want for it. Yeah. And that's how crude oil moved from like $20 a bottle, in fact, 10 to 20, and ultimately to 100. Dread, yep. You know, they took the initiative. It was not the West that did it for them. So if you have the diamond, and you know you're the only one who have the diamond, mm. how are you going to have somebody else say, oh, it only has value after I cut it and polish it? Then I would say, okay, go ahead. Go and polish what you don't have. And let's Thank see. you. <laughs> exactly. Value, you know, that's the mindset that we need in African leaders. You want to mm -hmm. buy uranium? Mm -hmm. It already has value Yes. before you have it. So give me the price I want. You want cobalt? In fact, cobalt is the key thing now because they need that to build the batteries for the electric mm -hmm. cars. Mm -hmm. So now we need to support Congo so that Congo can get the price it wants for the cobalt without which, you know, people like Elon Musk cannot do anything, you know? Mm -hmm. And Obviously, remember... They would want to kill the leader of Congo before he can oh, ask for that price. And that's where we need to come yes. and say, all of us are Congo when it comes to Cuba. You see? Mm. And, and make no mistake, again, I will show it. The name of that company sounding very similar to that mineral is not a coincidence. Yeah. And um, the... The, the point I would want to drive in light of the point you've just made is it's important to also understand that in spite of the fact that Africa is still largely underdeveloped by Europe, they need us to survive. Yep. They do. They very much need us to survive. And in so doing, in so doing, the African leaders have to get their acts together. And one way they can do that is to arm the youth. And how can they arm the youth? Education. Intentional education. Not rote learning. Education, purpose education that is specific to the African experience. And when I mean the African experience, I don't mean the overall African experience. That neck of the woods where you are, that education should apply there. If it doesn't apply there, then it's of no use to you. It's really of no use to you. So I don't, I'm not saying you come and you quote from Shakespeare, you quote from um, Tolstoy, you quote, uh, you quote from Herod, uh, Herodotus, you quote from, but yet you don't know. Uh, How you to don't fix know, a No, you don't Herodotus. know. You don't know exactly. Mm, you don't know. African. You don't mm. know Ngugi Wationgo. Mm. You don't know Wale Shoinka. You don't know uh, uh, PE or um, oh, yeah, Obitek. Mm -hmm. Obitek. You yep. don't know uh, Migari Mugo. You don't know. Mugo, yeah. You don't know 
uh, Florent Wampa, you don't know Cyprien Wenko, and see you don't know. I mean, that I can keep on the whole going. list, yeah. But the point is, you have to know yourself before you attempt to know somebody else. Right. So our curriculums have to be revamped mm -hmm. in the 21st century mm -hmm. to reflect the African experience. Mm -hmm. Teach yeah. up to a point in your native languages so exactly. that you understand the concept of what is being explained to you. And then from then on, you could do the hairy fairy stuff. There's, a, there's a school back in my in my town, um, and I hope they still do this. And back in the day before I decolonized my mind, because mm -hmm. I too was colonized mentally. Of course, all of us. Um, yes. Back in the day, I would criticize this. The fact that they teach from nursery to class three, I believe, in my native tongue. They teach classes in the native tongue. And I used to criticize it, but now I see the value in it. And this mm -hmm. is what Brother Adesoji is talking about. Mm -hmm. Those early years, make sure that our children are grounded <laughs> in our native tongues. I'm, I'm laughing because I, it just reminded me of something. A friend of mine, mm -hmm. Ugandan too, mm -hmm. said, uh, you know, in his village, mm -hmm. there's a very popular old man, you know. Everybody knew this old man. Mm -hmm. And then one day he said, oh, that's it for me. I'm never going back to church again. You know? you know, he was a Catholic. You know, he loved going to church when all the prayer and the proceedings uh... conduct conducted in Latin. <laughs> and then when they started in the local language, he said, anybody can understand what. <laughs> <laughs> he said, what kind of God speaks? You know, and then he used his language, you know. He said, no, that can't be. <laughs> to him, even though he didn't understand Latin, it was so mysterious. It was godly. And it was godly. There you go. <laughs> which which brings us <laughs> to the point um, Brother Rodney was making in the ground news with my brothers when he said, what's the point of the intellectual when you cannot communicate huh? with your own people? Yep. What yeah. is really the point of an intellectual? Yeah. Yeah. My grandmother will say, Otoni we, Otoni lakai, which is there's a difference between you reading a book and your common sense. When mm -hmm. you're coming to me, you sit and you talk with your common sense. Mm -hmm. So, yep. no, the we, books have destroyed so many generations, <laughs> you know, of Africans. On my people that I uh, have writers, you know, some in Uganda mm -hmm. who send me articles for Black Star News. And when they're quoting, you know, so-called distinguished Europeans, I delete it from the articles, you know. I say, I say find me Africans to quote, Africans to say so-and-so yes. said this, you know. Otherwise, yes. I'm going to take it out of the article. So I give them a chance, you know, to do that. It's, it's this amazing. is a great call to action even for myself mm -hmm. as I continue to write, Brother yeah. Adimari. Thank you for saying that. I'll Which be more is, keen to quote. When they say, they say according mm -hmm. to Aristotle, mm -hmm. according to... <laughs> According to Churchill, you know, your know, sad Churchill. Sad Churchill. This was a barbarian imperialist, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Brother, I you quickly if you can give me a minute, uh, because we are, uh, again, this is an extended conversation from the conversation we had with uh, Dr. Patricia Rodney, and we are talking about Walter Rodney's work and his legacy. And therefore, I wanted to just reach out to our audience um, and remind them of the Walter Rodney uh, Foundation and the upcoming 20th annual Walter Rodney Symposium on March 24th to 25th in Atlanta. And there's the link right there. Um, you can see it right on the bottom of the video. Uh, just that is where you will find more information. Also, uh, they will be, I believe, airing this documentary, Walter Rodney, What They Don't Want You to Know at the Symposium. So I am reaching out to my brothers and sisters. I look forward to seeing you in Atlanta in March. Uh, let's go support um, the Walter Rodney Foundation. But also a reminder on how to support Kumbukeni so that myself, Adesoji, and my brother Milton can do this work and um, we can leave mm, the white spaces that we call jobs um, and dedicate ourselves to our black community we ask you to join our Patreon community on patreon.com forward slash kumbukeni or subscribe. We're looking to hit that 1,000 number on YouTube. 
um, at youtube.com forward slash at Kumbukeni one. Thank you. Adesuji. Oh, yes. Um, I'm lost for words. <laughs> okay. I was going to ask um, as we move towards the closing. Mm -hmm. If you look, the book is 50 years old. More than 50 years old. No, 50 years old, actually. 50 years. 52? 52 51. years old. 51. Year. Yeah, 51 years old. Year yes. mm -hmm. So the book is 51 years old. So I'm asking you as Africans to look into your crystal balls 15 years from now. Mm. Because Mama Rodney said um, the book still has relevance when she wrote her piece 42 years ago. She said the book still had relevance. So my question to you as Africans is, would you think this book will still re have relevance 52 years from now? It would in a different context. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to take 50 years for the youth to wake up in Africa and to transform Africa. Because the, here's the, the good thing about it. The economies can actually be, be transformed within a period of you know, probably 10 to 15 years. Four, four years, brother uh, Sankara showed us. Four years. Absolutely. But in terms of industrialization, in terms mm -hmm. of industrialization, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. within 10, 15 years, it can be done. Mm -hmm. But we have to be allowed to draw our budget. You see, we have to reject the World Bank yes. and say, you can't come here and say, because I'm giving you um, money, you should not be able to feed your people. Yeah. Because if you can't feed your people, you can't do anything, number one. That's Every it. country subsidizes agriculture. Yeah. Make sure that farmers don't go out of business, except in Africa, because they want us to import food. And that's how mm. we import $35 billion worth. So let's stop that. Let's start using our resources. We have all the resources. If you're going to use my cobalt to build the batteries for electric cars, I want the electric cars built in my country. Exactly. <laughs> and so my people know how to build it and then export it to the rest of the world from the Congo. Otherwise, go and grow your cobalt somewhere else in the world. And if we do mm. that for all the other major resources we have within 15, 20 years, and then books like, uh, like Brother Rodney's book, like Neocolonialism, The Last Stage of mm -hmm. All these books, we will look back at a historical context. So these were historical context books. I was about but to as of today, these are blueprints that need to be implemented. Yes. You know. These, these to answer your question, Brother Desoji, and to add to what uh, Brother Milton is saying, I keep adjusting my headphones because I decided to come all African. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I forgot that my headphones are made by white people who do not... <laughs> <laughs> who do not cater for the African headgear give me enough room to wear my headphones even with my African attire but we make it work right so I agree today this is a guide this is a guide of how to do it and a warning of what is going on this is this is a guide today and I am hoping in 50 years based on us the people Mama Rodney said it to us yesterday. The power is in us. Mm -hmm. We are the ones who have to demand different. Yep. We are the ones who have to start looking out for our well-being. Yep. This is a charge on us. We are the ones who are going to determine if this will still be a guide in 50 years or it will be a hysteric, historical, um, uh, informative no. record to remind us so that we do not forget as we continue to build for Africa. Well put. It's, well it's upon put. us. Very well put. Samora Marshall used to say, a luta continua, victoria, <laughs> as <laughs> victory is certain, you know? Yes. And then, so, any last words from you, Sister Nduku, first? Um, Africans, please make headphones that I can wear when I have my African attire. That's my first one. My second one, all jokes aside, the power is in us, the people. We cannot keep complaining. I say this all the time in my uh, at my job i cannot complain if i'm not doing something to fix the situation we cannot keep complaining to my parents to my brothers to my sisters and i understand that it seems as an africa african who's sitting there trying to find a job 
trying to get food, it seems like you have no power, but re- you have the power. As long as you all unite, you have the power. Thomas Sankara said it, Adesoji. He said if all 54 leaders in Africa, students said no to the West and said no to paying debt, mm-hmm. they would all survive it and they would all be able to continue leading their, their countries. But if one person stands up, there's a plane crash. Target. There's Target. a bomb. Mm-hmm. There's something. They're gone. So we, the people, must come together and support the causes, the movements, and leaders who are supporting our well-being. And please, put the Kool-Aid down. The white man's ice is not colder. I promise you it's not. Okay, Brother Milton, uh, last words from you as we wrap up. You love yourself, love Africa, love being African. Uh, read Anta Job's African Origins of Civilization. Once you realize that the first high level mm-hmm. of culture, ancient Egypt, Kemet, was an African civilization, it means that you cannot be inferior or secondary to yeah. anybody in the world. And by the way, even much more important, at one time in the history of the world, everybody was actually African. In other words, everybody was pigmented the way that we look now. It is Mm. only after Africans started moving to other parts of the world. The climactic conditions were very different in those days. So, you know, beyond 100,000 years ago, when they started settling parts of the world, then we ended up with other forms of human beings, Europeans, Asians, and so on, which means essentially everybody is actually an African, and we all trace our origin to East and Central Africa region, you know. Mm -hmm. So how can you be inferior to anybody? Love yourself. For me, I would, let's leave on this very insightful note, which is Europe has always liked to silence the path of Africans. It is time to shout that past out loud. Just like Brother Milton just said about Egypt, about the kingdoms, Mosi Empire, Shonga Empire, Mali Empire, the Empire, the Zimbabwean Empire, the Aksum Empire. And that is just people who, quote unquote, were supposed to be primitive, Mm -hmm. but they left legacies. Let's build on that legacies. And hopefully we'll be speaking about how Africa developed Africa. Imagine that. That would be a good book to read. Yes, indeed. Thank you all for joining us. Once again, please support the channel. Subscribe to us at Kumbukeni. That is K-U-M-B-E-K-E-N-I. That's Kumbukeni on YouTube. And subscribe. Join us on Patreon at Kumbukeni1. It's patreon.com forward slash Kumbukeni. But also, you. Brother Adesoji, we have a good six minutes before the time runs out. A quick one. Can I? A quick one? Yeah, go on. Because, Brother um, Rodney talks about culture. A quick, quick two, one minute responses. Culture. Uh, and well, our detachment from our culture. Right. Actually, what I like that he talks about culture rather than civilization. Yeah. And he makes a key distinction. He said, because when you start saying civilization, then you are starting to draw valuation and he says who is to determine what is actually writes this what which is much more sophisticated and beautiful a ballet or a traditional ngoma Mm. right in an african country and that's what he's distinguished to say we should try to resist the temptation of using quote-unquote civilization let's talk about cultures and sophisticated cultures high levels of culture, and all of that we had and have in Africa. But once we start thinking about the concept of civilization, Mm -hmm. then we start comparative basis. Are you superior to us or are we superior? So no, all of that have to be put in context. They're beautiful within their own environments, you see? Mm -hmm. So that's my response to that word, culture. So uh, culture... 
You just need to go into the British Museum. <laughs> you will find the African culture there. Yep. Or MoMA. Right here. But, but you have our fellow brothers and sisters who go there for, oh, it's a day at the museum, but they come out still thinking that belongs to the British Museum. Yeah, but it's difficult to explain if you're standing right in front of your culture and you're doubting your culture. Because even the Europeans, when they stole what they did steal, looted, mm -hmm. 1897, Bini expedition, mm -hmm. when they looted the Bini empire and now showcase the same thing as artifacts, they even doubted what they saw. Mm -hmm. They said, these people could not have done this. Mm -hmm. It must have been the Europeans. Mm -hmm. It must have been. It, when they went to Egypt, they tried to rewrite the story. That mm -hmm. they this, is not, yep. this is not possible. Yep. Yeah, it couldn't have been them. Yeah. And, and that goes to the importance of us writing our stories so that the record is, is the, there for us. The, the, va the value of one piece of our culture passed hand in I think it was 1982 yeah 1982 when a piece of beanie artifact sold for 10 million dollars one piece something yeah. made by primitives is worth 10 million dollars at this mm -hmm. subject yes yes savages actually yep. savages Barbarians. Yeah. So, you know, so thank you, brothers. Carnivals. You know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. The, the other thing I will say, number one, let's teach our culture. Let's go back to our culture. Let's embrace our culture. Let us dress in our culture. Um, let us have music in our culture. Let us eat food in our culture. Let us do dance and, and plays in our culture. Uh, the one thing my friend and I are doing in my neighborhood this summer is we're going to reach out to the uh, the new the county and we're going to see if we can have a one week summer camp and we're going to teach Kiswahili we're going to teach the culture we're going to teach protocol and manners based on African culture and during that one week we're going to teach the students a dance that they will perform for their parents at the end of the week that is one thing that myself and a fellow Kenyan are going to do to contribute to this work of going back to our culture um, and the other thing I will say too is we start writing and putting records of, of this culture. Um, because we and are... Let me just add one thing. Yes, please. Amilka Cabral. Mm. To him, culture was inherently tied to the act of revolution. Yep. yep. Said by re-embracing your culture, you're putting yourself back into the path of history. Mm -hmm. He said Africa had its organic history. The Europeans came and removed us from our course. Let's seize it so we can get back on that course yeah. with our culture. Yeah. And as a last uh, call to action, again, this is an extended conversation of our conversation that we had with Dr. Patricia Rodney, Walter Rodney's, Dr. Walter Rodney's uh, widow, and a great friend to Kumbukeni and a great friend to the Black community because of the work she has done, she and her family have done. In order to support them, they're still carrying on Walter Rodney's legacy through the Walter Rodney Foundation. You can support them at www.walterrodneyfoundation.org. And the link again is right there at the bottom of the uh, screen. And they have something on their website. They're calling it a legacy project. Go there, find out how you can participate. One of the ways that myself and my brothers are going to participate is they have asked us to write pieces on how Dr. Walter Rodney's work has influenced our lives. And we're going to be doing that in the coming weeks. So please, again, visit the website and support them and continue Brother Walter Rodney's legacy. And for us, Kumbukeni, you can join our Patreon community on patreon.com forward slash kumbukeni, or you can join us on YouTube and become a subscriber. All you need to do is hit the subscribe button and you don't even have to worry about the alerts. You don't even have to watch the videos, but we encourage that you do because that is a goal of our work to help you decolonize your minds. So you can subscribe on youtube.com forward slash at kumbukeni1. And we thank you all for joining us. Brother Adesoji. Yes, uh, as I said earlier, um, before we had to bring in culture, let's remember 
we need to be speaking about how Africans develop Africa. That will be a subject for another day. And hopefully we can do that in our lifetime. Until next time, please stay Africans, keep your minds decolonized, and keep keep up the fights. Go ahead, Rini. Thank you.